国際 PNF 協会認定インストラクター候補者の江口と申します。この動画は2020年10月12日から10月17日に行われた国際 PNF 協会オンライン学会での講演を翻訳した内容です。IPNFA 及び講演者の許可を得てアップロードされています。動画の最後に2021年5月から7月の期間に開催予定の IPNFA 特別ベーシック講習会のお知らせがあります。ぜひご覧ください。それでは本編の方に移りたいと思います。Hello everyone! My name is Jose Vicente Martins from Brazil. I'm IPNFA Adjustment Instructor and I teach Neurological Physical Therapy at Federal University. Of Rio de Janeiro. I would like to thank IPNFA for the invitation and it's a great pleasure for me to be here and to give this lecture. So my topic is PNF for neurologic and orthopedic patients with upper extremity impairments. So we're going to talk more about the proximal problems concerning shoulder problems and also elbow problems for this kind of patients. Uh, when we check the shoulder complex, we have to assess joints such as lateral humeral joint, sternoclavicular joint, acromclavicular joint, and also the scapular thoracic joint. But we have to know that this kind of patient can also have some problems concerning the cervical spine thoracic spine and trunk. So here we can see the movements of the eight joint and we can see the scapular humor rhythm. So when you think about neurological orthopedic patients with upper limb impairments, we have a lot of diseases which can cause some problems such as a stroke, MS, Parkinson's, spinal cord injury, brachial plexus injury, brain injury, and others. で、えっ、ー、とこれらの整形外科系の疾患っていうふうに言ってますけれども、これが、ね、癒着性の関節方炎ですね。それからえっ、ー、とこちらが肩の対抗変性と訳したらいいですかね。それから OA ですね。で、憲法下の頭痛症候群。それから、電磁のパスティっていうのは、えー、腱の障害。それから、腱板損傷。で、肩のインスタビリティ、不安定性ということですね。And also here we can see a lot of orthopedic diseases.What is common among neurological and orthopedic patients with upper limb disorders?We know that some patients They have loss of scapular humor rhythm. Some patients can present instability, lack of mobility, weakness, pain, overload in some joints, tongue problem, sensation problem, lack of motor control, and also active limitations. 最後のこのアクティビティリミテーションというのは活動制限なので、えーとまあ、これらの痛みとか筋力低下とか、えー、可動性の低下とか不安定性とか、まあ、こういった機能構造レベルの問題があって、えー、例えば、えー、と棚にお皿を入れられないとか、えー、髪の毛を洗えないとかですね、えーまあ、いろんな動作の制限が起こってくるという意味での活動制限ということですね。So here is a really nice article showing the vector forces about different muscles concerning scapular thoracic joints and also glenohumeral joints. So here we can see movement of the scapular thoracic joint. We can see here elevation and depression, retraction and retraction, upward rotation and also Downward rotation. But we have to know that there are other movements also important, such as external rotation and internal rotation, and also posterior tilting and anterior tilting. 
So here we can see the important muscles when we move our arm to flexion or abduction. Here we can see serratus anteriors doing this kind of movement, upward rotation and also protraction that we can also call abduction. Here we can see upper trap, mid trap and lower trap. So here we can see the rotator cuff muscles. They are really important to move and also to stabilize the head of the humeral. Here we can see the couple forces. In this movement, external rotation of the scapula thoracic joint, we have the activity of the upper trapezius, mid and also lower trap plus serratus anteriors. Here, when we talk about upward rotation, we have upper trap and also serratus anteriors. And for this movement, posterior tilting, we have lower trap and also serratus anteriors. When we check one patient with shoulder problem, we have to assess if the patient has scapular dyskinesis. So we know that high quality clinical trials are needed to establish whether there is a possible correlation between scapular dyskinesis patterns and the specific findings of shoulder pathologies with altered scapular kinematics. We know that until now it's still unclear whether the scapular dyskinesis is cause or consequence of shoulder dysfunction, or whether scapular dyskinesis is correlated to shoulder symptoms. Some articles have shown that healthy individuals have scapular dyskinesis, so only the dyskinesis cannot be considered an important issue during the assessment of the scapular dyskinesis. Beside observation, we need to check the rest position of the scapula, test to reduce symptoms, muscle strength and flexibility of the muscles, and also the soft tissue. And there are different types of classification concerning scapular dyskinesis. So here is one classification. We have three different types. The first one, is uh, when we see the prominent inferior angle of the scapula and the cause could be shortening of the pectoralis minor and also GERD, glenohumeral humeral internal rotation deficit. During our assessment, we have to check if the patient presents this kind of problem. And concerning muscle strength, we have to check the weakness of the lower trap and also serratus anteriors. Type 2, we check that the patient has a prominent medial border of the scapula. So some patients who present this kind of problem, they can have this kind of bad posture, that means hyperkyphosis or some dysfunction of the three traps and also weakness of the serratus anteriors. And type 3, we can check the superior and medial angle of the scapula could be prominent. And the cause for that may be the tightness of the levator scapulae, the relation between upper trapeze and serratus anteriors and also the relation between upper trap and lower trap. So this is another article written by Annie Coles about scapula problems and we can see here that the patients can present some problems such as lack of soft tissue flexibility and this could be shortening of the pectoralis minor, levitris scapulae, 
and also rhomboid muscles, or patient can present shortening of the posterior capsule, infraspinator muscle, and latissimus muscle. Concerning weakness, we can see that lower and middle middle trap and also serratus anteriors. So, when you think about PNF treatment, we know that PNF can be really useful for treating this kind of patients, neurological or orthopedic patients. Here is one article that was published last year about frozen shoulder, uh, and we can see here that this article is showing that CNA, uh, PNF was superior than conventional physical therapy in decreasing pain and increasing external rotation and also abduction range of motion. In here, we published last year this article about brachial plexus injury and we, we could see with irradiation that the patient got better with PNF. So, when you think about PNF, we have the philosophy, we have basic principles and procedures, techniques, gait class, match activities, and also vital functions. During the assessment, we have to check the scapular humeral rhythm, we can use classical tests, we can we must test the muscles. We have to test range of motion passively and also the kinematic. Tone assessment, coordination, sensation, and we have to assess the patient in different positions. We can also use scales and some test activities, thinking about activities of daily livings and also sports. So, uh, when we, we build a treatment with PNF and we think about facilitation of the upper limb, we can use techniques, we can use basic principles and procedures, MET activities, parallel bars, vital function, material such as uh, cheruband, uh, weights in different positions. We can use closed chain and open chain. We can think about kinetic chain and concerning basic principles and procedures. Everybody knows about these basic principles and procedures. えっと、ここで述べられてるのは感覚刺激。それから身長刺激ですね。これも こういうタイミング収縮のタイミングですね to treat this kind of patients. When you think about techniques, we have agonist techniques such as combination of isotonics, rhythm initiation, replication, repeat the stretch from beginning of range and also through the range, and we have antagonist 
techniques such as dynamic reversal, stabilizing reversal, rhythm stabilization, and also relaxation techniques. Contract, relax, and hold, relax. During the lecture, we're going to see when we can use each of them for treating this kind of patients. So, when we think about patterns, we have two diagonals of the upper limbs, flexion, abduction, external rotation, and the way back, and the variations with the elbow. We have flexion, adduction, external rotation, and the way back, uh, with the variations with the elbow. We have una thrust and the way back, radial thrust and the way back, scapula patterns, we have irradiation from, tr from trunk, pelvis and leg pattern, and we can work in different positions against or in favor of the gravity. So, concerning positions, we can use many positions, hook line, bridging, side on elbow and variations, side sitting and variations, long sitting, prone on elbow and variations, quadruped position and variations, sitting in parallel bars. So here you can see some mat activities, like I said before. PNF の中のマットアクティビティに関する図なんですけども、先ほどいろんな C にポジショニングについて述べられてましたけども、マットアクティビティにはこういった腹外からの流れですね、腹外から肘をついて、えー、肘、膝をついて、四つ台になって、でかえー、膝立ちになって、片膝立ちになって立ち上がると。まあ、こういう腹外からの流れ。それから、肺外から、側外になって、腹外になるという、まあ、こういった寝返りの流れですね。それから、肺外から、えー、膝を立てて、えー、ブリッチング、お尻を持ち上げるであるとか、えー、膝を立てたところから、下肢、両下肢を左右に倒す運動。で、そこから、えー、横座りになっていく流れ。それから、肺外から、調剤になって、でそこからプッシュアップしたり、それからスクーティングですね、前後に進むような動き。まあ、こういった流れがあるんですね。でそういった中で、各ポジションを目的に合わせて利用するという考え方があるんですけども、まあ、その図になりますね。And also we have to think about ICF during assessment and during the treatment. We have to think about body function uh, impairments, activity limitations, and restrictions of the participation. So, concerning treatment, thinking about body function, uh, like uh, I showed you before, we have some structures that can have lack of flexibility and also mobility. For example, pectoralis minor, levator scapulae, rhomboids, upper trunk, posterior capsule, infraspinators, and also lattice doors. And for this kind of problem, we can use the techniques hold relax and contract relax, and also dynamic reversal. I'm going to show you some practical examples in a few minutes. So here, we have another Great articles by any course are showing about scapular muscle dysfunction. So in here we can see that we have those mus muscles that I said before with lack of flexibility. In here, on the other side, we have some muscles which can present weakness. So, here are some examples, practical examples, uh, how to work with lack of flexibility. Here I'm using contractor lens. で、今左のこの動画では、上肢の
進展外転内線パターンを用いて性的な収縮を得てる状態ですねで広背筋の収縮を得て、えー、その後リラクゼーションを得ます、まあ、だいたい収縮する長さは10秒ぐらいがいいだろうというふうに文献でも言われてるんですけども、えー、その収縮した後の弛緩をしっかり促してでまた新しいレンジに可動域に進んでいくという流れを行っていますで右ですけどもこのポジショニングで、えー、進展内転内線の動きを促してそれに対して抵抗をかけている性的な収縮を得ている状態でまたその後にリラクゼーションを得て新しいレンジに進んでいくんですけどもまあ、ターゲットの筋としてはおそらくまあ大胸筋とかになってくるかと思いますね。And after that, she's going to flexion, abduction, external rotation. So here, the patient with GERD, that means that's T of the internal. この場合は、えー、と内線、肩の内線可動域を改善させようとしていて、で今行っているのは、えー、屈曲外転外線の肘を曲げ,なら曲げながらというパターンがあるんですけども、それに対して抵抗、性的な抵抗をかけていて、で収縮を得て、また、えー、新しいレンジ、今ですと、内線させる方向に持っていくと思うんですが、えーまあ、そういったことをやっているということですね。Of the glenal humeral joint. We can see here hold relax to increase internal rotation. で、えー、と今左の小胸筋をターゲットにしていて、えーまあ、その付着している後頭皮付近をコンタクトしていると思うんですけども PNF のパターンでいうと肩甲骨の前方火星のような動きですかねの収縮を得て。で,しで、その後、歯間をして伸ばしていくということをやってると思うんですね。まあ、こういったところですね。まあ、あのまあ左右で逆になってますけども、ここの収縮を得て、引き伸ばしていくということをやっています。So, during assessment, when we see patient with lack of flexibility, we have to check which muscles We have to work and we can apply those techniques. Here we can see one example with a patient with lack of mobility. She has frozen shoulder. And I'm using now hook line position with. 膝立てがいですねのポジショニングでこの下肢のローテーションの動きで、えー、動的な交互収縮ダイナミックリバーサルズを使っていますで
ターゲットとしてはここの左の上司のおそらく進展外転の動きを引き出したいんだと思うんですけれどもこの歌詞をこの場合ですと右の方に倒してもらった時に、えー、この左肩で床を押すような反応が得られますのでそれを期待しているものだと思われます。So, like I said before, one position, one technique, and the goal is string place mobility. And, and after that, here, I can work with breathing. The first C, the first technique, the first one, 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 the f i 複数のテクニックを用いることもあります And the goal is also... でも、えー、と体幹が今の運動によって右回線することによって相対的に左の肩が進展あるいは外転するような反応が得られますのでそれを期待しているものですね。Mobilize the shoulder. And here, in quadruped position, we can see here. で今ですと、この右の動画ですと、えー、この骨盤を弾いてますけども、後ろに押してもらったときに、えー、おそらく左の肩だと思うんですけど、屈曲あるいは外転の反応が得られますので、それを期待しているものと思われます。もし常識のに障害があってその問題点の一つとして体幹上部体幹の可動性が少ない場合こういったこともできますよという例だと思われます。We can emphasize lower trap, middle trap, serratus and heels, rotator cuff muscles, and also we can think about kinetic chain, trunk, and lower limbs. For that, we can use a combination of isotonics, stabilizing reversal, and rhythmic stabilization. Let's see some examples. Here again, we can see. まあ、筋肉低下を起こしやすい筋、まあ、再三繰り返しているように僧帽筋下部中部それから前虚筋が強化する必要があるということを強調していますね。This muscles. Here I'm using scapula patterns. We know that some orthopedic patients they come to us after some, some weeks in the sling. And they lose the mobility of the scapula. So I'm using here a n d two elevation in here. で、えー、こちらの画像は、えー、肩甲骨の前方挙上と呼ばれる運動ですね。肩甲骨を挙上して、前方突出して、上方回線するような動き。こういう、まあ、動きが低下している場合に、こういうことができますよと。でこちらでは、えー、後方火星と呼ばれるようなですね動きを促して、えー、火星、下方回線、それから内転させるような、えー、あるいは後傾させるようなですねこっちは結構で前傾させるようなですねこういう運動を促せますよという。Well, 
thinking about situations, I'm using time for emphasis. The pattern is flexion, abduction, external rotation, and in the middle of the, the, the pattern, uh, I'm using time for emphasis to emphasize serratus and cheerios. And here, in pronoun elbow modification position, I'm working also on serratus and cheerios. I'm asking the patient to go up and I'm giving the patient resistance using a combination of isotonics. So here in amphibious position with more load on the upper limbs, the same work with. この左の下肢を外転外線させるようなポジションに置いてですねでそうさせると右の上肢により、えー、加重されることになりますので、まあ、その中で活性させようとしています。To emphasize the right shoulder. It's a really combination because I'm working on serratus and cheerios, and also in this position, the patient can recruit. Based on, yeah, to the weight of this shoulder joint, from the left to the right shoulder joint, from the left to the right shoulder joint. それに抵抗してもらうような形ですね。その中で、急進性収縮、遠心性収縮というようなことをやっていたと思われます。The rotator cuff muscles. So here, in side sitting position, first I'm working with satellite reversal. It's so important patient here should have a good alignment. Now, これあのこもつ<笑>これも触れないわけにはいかないのであ,のあえて触れるんですけどもあの皆さんもねあのこのモザイクが何の意味をなしてるんだという<笑>あのそうツッコミが入りそうな動画なんですけども,<笑>もうあの、ね、これが気になってなかなかあの内容が入ってこけ,けえへんという。バイオがあると思いますので、もうあえてここで突っ込みを入れたいと思います。<笑>またこの、えらい男前なんですよね、この方が。もうそれがまた余計おもろいっていう、もうこれ最初見たときも僕大爆笑してしまいまして、えー、もう触れないわけにはいかないので、すいません。まあこれぐらいに<笑>、いじるのはこれぐらいにして、先に進みたいと思います。まあ今もあの言ってましたけども、このアライメントですね、この、肩のアライメントを整えた中で刺激を与えることが重要というふうに言っています。Indirect treatment using, using flexion, abduction, external rotation to emphasize here. 回線筋腱板っていう話ですけども、まあ、三角筋ももちろん、それから肩甲体周囲も。全体的な安定性を高めるというようなことになるかと思いますね。Rotator cuff muscles. Here, when I resist here, the radiation is going to abduction and extension of the shoulder. So, we know from some articles that when we ask the patient to keep The external rotation of the shoulder and to open hands using wrist extensors, uh, we can emphasize traps. For example, external rotation of the shoulder can emphasize more lower trap. And when the patient is doing wrist extension, we can emphasize. Mid trap. And one explanation for that could be the kinetic chain. Here, 
in a close chain position. It's so important when we work on this kind of position. We know that the patient can really activate more rotator cuff muscles. When we ask the patient to remove the leg on the same side, we can emphasize serratus anteriors here. You can see I'm using now combination of isotonic. I'm asking the patient, let me move you forward, keep it here, and now go back. And when we ask the patient to remove the opposite leg, the contralateral leg, we emphasize here on the right, uh, on the right side the lower trap. So this is the explanation. It's coming from this article. They could check this with EMG. So uh, this is another nice article showing that. Uh, when we work in a standing position, we tend to activate more upper trapezium, especially during the from 60 to 120 degrees. So, when we have a patient with overactivity of the upper trapezium, we should work more in sideline position and supine position. So here we can see flexion, abduction, external rotation with elbow extension. This is a really good exercise to activate lower trap and we can have here the balance between upper trap and lower trap. And here I'm using flexion abduction, external rotation with elbow flexion and I'm using more time for emphasis for external rotators. まあこのまた顔が出ていることは多いといてですね。えー、今上肢の屈曲外転外旋のパターンを用いて。えー、とこの、えー、C でポジショニングで止めてですねこの左の手ではですねこの屈曲と外転に対して性的な収縮を得ている状態ですねで A のコンタクトによって右手によって外旋を促してますね患者さんの外旋運動に対して抵抗をかけているそれを強調しているということになりますね。So, in this case here, I'm using flexion, abduction, external rotation in sideline position. This is a good exercise to activate the external rotators and also the lower trap. In here, the same pattern. In supine position. So here I'm using again flexion, abduction, external rotation in prone position. So we know from some articles that this pattern in this position can activate more lower trap because the scapula has to do a posterior tilt. 今、側外、それから背外、今、腹外の画像を見せてますけども、まあ、それぞれの患者さんのレベルに合わせてですね、用いることができると。えーまあ、背外ですと、重、重力の活動になるので、まあ、患者さんにとっては、えーまあ、アドバンテージがある状態ですね、有利な状態の中で運動を行わせることができる。で、こういった腹外になると、高重力。の活動になりますので、患者さんにとってはより負荷がかかってくる運動ということになりますね。まあ、こういう使い分けができますよという例です。
Here we can see extension, abduction, internal rotation, bilaterally, to activate more lower trap. And also, when I would like to put more load on the upper limb, you have to, we can ask the patient to keep the body here on the Swiss ball. But she should flex a little more the elbow here. And also, when I ask the patient to remove one arm and one leg, we have more weight bearing on the left side. And this is a good activation for rotator cuff muscles and also for serratus and serratus. So here you can see flexion, abduction, external rotation in association with trunk extension. So, and now we can see some exercises without hand resistance, but with this kind of load. Here flexion, abduction, external rotation, and here extension, abduction, internal rotation. This is really good to activate subscapular muscles, subscapular muscle, in order to activate internal rotation of the shoulder. Here, extension, abduction, internal rotation. It's a really good pattern to activate lower trap. And here, flexion, flexion, abduction, external rotation with elbow extension to activate external tears and also the muscles of the scapular joint, such as the good relation between upper and lower trapeze. So, here we can see the whole of kinetic chain in shoulder rehabilitation. That means that we can use the other part of the body, such as trunk and lower limb, to emphasize some shoulder muscle. 一方でこのローテーター下腹鍵盤にのみ働きかけたい場合には、えー、とキネティックチェーンを用いないエクササイズ、まあ、個別の、えー、運動ですねを用いた方がいいということも書かれてますね。まあ、補足として、えー、言っておきます。So here we have one example. I'm using heel lifting in half kneeling position. Here we can emphasize trunk and also we are working more on this hip muscles. So concerning activity and participation, you have to think about activities of daily living, sports and patients' wishes. And we know that some techniques are important for motor control and also motor learning, such as rhythmic initiation, replication and combination of isotonics. So here we can see a patient bring the the glass to the mouth. I'm using here combination of isotonic. Here, comb, comb hair, and using time for emphasis to emphasize external rotation. And now, patient is doing by himself. So. Now some neurological examples. Here is a patient with a brachial plexus injury. She has a lesion of the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. She's not, she's not able 
to do flexion, abduction, external rotation of the shoulder. 今えっ、ー、と左上の動画では骨盤体を用いてですね、P N F のパターンで言うと前方挙上をしておりまして、で今この左の上肢はベッドの端をも端にしてますけども、この状況下でこの骨盤の前方挙上することによって、この手でですね、ベッドをこう引こうという、まあ、固定しようとしますので、肘の屈曲の反応が得られると、それを狙っているということですね。Here, To emphasize our flexors. Here, extension, a deduction, internal rotation to emphasize our flexors. And これも同じですね。左の手でベッドの端を外していて、その中で右手、右の上肢を使って伸展内転、内旋させようという。それに対して抵抗をかけることによって、えー、肘の左の肘の屈曲を流そうと。Here, the direct treatment. I'm using flexion, a deduction, external rotation with elbow flexion in sideline position. That means balance in favor of the gravity. And here, in the standing position, she's holding the table and putting her back and down, and then she has to. Go back, and when she does this kind of movement, she started to emphasize elbow flexors. Here, flexion, a deduction, external rotation with elbow flexion to emphasize this kind of task. And the last case we can see a stroke patient. So I'm working with him in a close kinematic chain using this kind of simulation for serratus and chirios. And after that, combination of isotonics. This is the effect arm, and I'm here on his side just to give him more security. And here we can see indirect treatment. I'm using the left arm. He's doing flexion, abduction, external rotation, and the goal is. Irradiation to this arm. Irradiation for irradiation to shoulder extensors and abductors, and also elbow extensors. Here, more activity, trunk mobility. And here I'm using the trunk to emphasize elbow extension. もうおそらくですけどもこの右の動画の内容ですね。右の上肢で、えー、ベッドを外して固定点を得た中で運動を行わせてますけども、その前準備としての、えー、この体幹の可動性が必要になってくるので。でその前準備としてこの左側の内容をやっているという流れだと思いますけど。And then some movement with the upper limb and some task. Bring the, the glass to the mouth using combination of isotonic. And then patient is doing by himself. So 
I hope that you enjoyed this lecture. So I could show you some examples, project examples, how to use PNF for those kind of patients. And we know that closed chain exercise improve glenohumeral and scapular stability. I showed you that stretching techniques could be used for, for short, short muscles. Uh, also, we have to emphasize strengthening for some muscles. We know that when we have a patient with overactive of the upper trap, we should work more in low positions such as spine, prone position, quadruped and also sideline. And our job should be all the time work with activity and participation level. And now we know from some articles that kinematic chain is another tool to work with this kind of patient. So thank you so much for your attention. It was a great pleasure for me to give this lecture. And um, here you can see my email address. If, if you have any question, please feel free to ask me.